those of you who have owned kind of hot hatchy sort of vehicles, you know the magic in them is that you could just be going to the grocery store and that drive becomes exciting just in the way that the car behaves in day-to-day -day driving experiences. You don't get that here in the Sonata N-Line. This is a tame family sedan at its core. Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor and Hyundai is staying committed to the sedan game by facelifting their flagship sedan at this point, the 2024 Hyundai Sonata. This one specifically is the N-Line version, which gets you a 290 horsepower, 311 pound foot of torque, 2.5 liter turbocharged engine mated to an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission and front wheel drive. The formula really has not changed from the outgoing or pre-facelifted Sonata, but they've made a few subtle tweaks to make the car I'll say a little bit more livable and a little bit more stylish, but overall, this is still the Hyundai Sonata N-Line that we've had for a few years, and it's a weird blend. <laughs> the the N-Line to me, I actually went back and watched my first drive review on the outgoing Hyundai Sonata N-Line. I don't know why I keep saying the whole name, but I came away with a similar rub after the first drive of that car that I did after spending a week with this one. It's not very hot. And some of you are gonna chime right in and be like, oh, what are you talking about? This car is super exciting. It is in just the right sort of driving situation. But in general, this is much more tamed down from something like the Elantra N or even something like a Civic Si or a Volkswagen GTI or something like that. And I understand those are in general smaller cars and they, they've got a different purpose. But that still goes to, to say that the personality of the Sonata N-Line is a bit strange. It's not all the way in the direction of something like an Accord V6 or an Accord 2 liter or a Camry V6 where it's essentially just a, a basic family sedan with a lot of power, but it's also not fully in the other direction of a uh, hopped up high speed sort of performance car. It, it kind of has the power and it has the transmission and the suspension to drive spiritedly, but it also has more of the character of just a, a basic button down daily driver family sedan. And for just the right buyer, that might be the ticket. So you've got to look at how it looks on the outside now. Let's hop in and drive the gosh darn thing. I should say, if you want to see more on the Sonata N-Line, check the link below. We've got a full review of the Bose sound system, which I have to say, Hyundai has done an amazing job improving for the facelift. Very, very satisfied with it. And we've also got a dedicated breakdown on the 12.3 inch audio system, or infotainment system here. You can see that linked below. And we've got a whole fuel economy test for this end line as well. And of course, coverage on the outgoing model. Right off the bat, $36,000 is what you're looking at for this one. So a little bit of a price bump from the outgoing model, understandably so. For that, you get heated seats, you get this Bose sound system, you get actually a little bit of kind of Alcantara inserts for the seats, feels nice. You get a great suite of safety systems, you get Hyundai's excellent active driving assistant. What else? You get this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which small qualm of mine, if you want digital speed readout in here, you have to have this kind of simplified, modern-y looking gauge cluster. But if you change that and you want a more traditional, I would go as far as to say handsome gauge cluster theme, then you can choose classic, but then you lose the ability to have any sort of digital speed readout. Even if you scroll through the menu here in the center, like some other Hyundai vehicles where you can get digital speed readout, you don't get it in this one. And I don't believe it's even something you can customize. So, I mean, I've, I've dug through the infotainment system, haven't been able to find a way to do that. So that's a bit of a shame to me. But I gotta give Hyundai credit for keeping so many physical controls in here. We've got a physical volume knob that works nicely. A bunch of physical controls for media as well as navigating your infotainment system. A bunch of physical controls on the steering wheel as well. The touchscreen is too far away and I've noticed this in a lot of Hyundai vehicles. Me at five foot 10, average size arms. This is full extension. I cannot reach out and touch the, t the infotainment screen without leaning forward from my seat. It's a bit unfortunate. They've redesigned this center console area for the 24 model, and I gotta say, I'm a pretty big fan. You've got a nice, grippy wireless device charger right here that hugs your phone in decently, and then you've got a little bit of storage around it. You've got a decent sized kind of center console area to put things, 
and some really large cup holders as well. I was impressed by how well we were able to fit our larger water bottles. And part of that is because Hyundai has decided to implement column shifters in many of their vehicles. And I am quite a fan of that. It really frees up the center console area and uh, makes it so it's pretty easy to shift gears. It might take you a little while to build up the muscle memory of where you're reaching in in order to make that shift and what direction you're turning it. Once you do, it's a very clean and crisp way to do shifting. Most of the improvements that the Sonata has here for 2024 are improvements that I would appreciate more so in something like the limited trim with the new hybrid powertrain. I'd really like to experience that. In that one, you also get ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel. The ride's gonna be smoother. It's gonna be a little bit quieter in here as well. Yeah, you're paying a few thousand dollars more for that model, but everything about the 2024 model year Sonata feels more grown up and refined. And I would appreciate that more in something that doesn't also have red accents and sport seats and a sport tuned suspension. And that's the thing, in normal drive mode, the Sonata N-Line does not feel very exciting unless you really, really get on it. And that's for better or for worse. For daily driving, you're just going to work or you're taking the kids to school or something, yeah. You don't want it to feel exciting necessarily. You just want it to feel competent. And as you can see, getting away from the line there, you got plenty of power, but you hear how quickly it's shifting. It's not ringing out the gears or anything. It's, it's not providing me any sort of engaging driving experience. And the steering is still pretty, uh, I'm not gonna say lazy, but it's it's slow. It's a relaxed steering and, and it's not something like a Mark 7 GTI that makes daily driving exciting. You do really have to put this into the right environment to make it exciting, which we're gonna go do. I'm heading to the Canyon Roads right now. We're gonna toss this around and have fun. But those of you who have owned kind of hot hatchy sort of vehicles, you know the magic in them is that you could just be going to the grocery store and that drive becomes exciting just in the way that the car behaves in day-to-day -day driving experiences. You don't get that here in the Sonata N-Line. This is a tame family sedan at its core. And this is perhaps digging a little too deep for just a basic sedan review here, but I notice driving all the different Hyundai vehicles as compared to something like driving all the different Hondas or Mazdas in that there's a very, very subtle sportiness and driver engagement to a Honda or to a Mazda that you just don't get in the Hyundai vehicles. And, and that's not to say that they don't make very, very fun vehicles to drive. I'm a huge proponent of the Elantra N-Line, or the Elantra N, the full N, and I, I very much appreciate many, many different Hyundais. But those of you who know, you know that you get into a Honda and there's um, the, everything, the, the way it's tuned, the way the, the car reacts to you and, and the way you feel driving it, very subtly, it's exciting to drive, it, it's satisfying, it's very direct, and you don't quite get that out of this Sonata N-Line. Despite being the sportier model, it's that, that, that fizz, that very subtle um, engagement is not there. Another quick side note to mention before I forget, Miles over at Miles Per Hour had this car right before I did, and he pointed out to me that he very much enjoyed it. However, he has two young children, and there's no rear air vents in the Sonata N-Line. Now you do get them in the hybrid Sonatas, but you don't get it in the N-Line, and that to me is a miss. It was a big miss to him as well because it's 90 degrees outside here some of these days here in Southern California, and he can't cool down his kids properly because there's no rear air vents. So it is a bit unfortunate that Hyundai decided to cost cut right there. And they have the spot for the air vents and the other models get them, but not in the N-Line. It's one thing if this were something like an Elantra with limited rear seat space, okay then I could see foregoing the rear air vents. But in a family sedan like this, no, you gotta have those. This road is a little bit rougher here in this section and I should point out that while Alyssa did initially like riding around in the car, there was one point we were going through a, a section of highway actually that had a little bit more kind of rocking back and forth sort of pavement heaves. And she said she was actually getting a bit nauseous in this car from the way that it was bucking back and forth. And I gotta agree with her, it is a, it's a firm suspension. And again, it's a sporty type of car. I get why you're gonna want a firmer suspension. But again, it sort of gets into this questionable nature of the end line of like, okay, it's a, it's a family sedan and you're daily driving it with family, but then 
you got this sporty suspension. It's, it's kind of a strange combination there. I'll also add that Christopher Brower over at Topher Drives had this car before I did as well, and he took it on a significant road trip. And I, I messaged him after where I was like, oh, you know, great, after all that time with the car, did you bond with it? He said, not really. I mean, it, it does everything pretty well, but he, he, he was ready to be done with it. He just they didn't have that kind of driver connection for him that, that he gets with a lot of cars. And after spending a week with it myself, I hate to say it, but I, I, I kind of get what he means. It's, it is lacking a bit of soul and a bit of character. All right, it'd be ignorant of me to not toss this car around in some twisties during this review. So let's press the drive mode button, get it into sport. I'm going to turn traction and stability control all the way off, which bless Hyundai's heart that they still let us do this. And we're going to startle some of the drivers on the other side of the road and get this thing going. I just accidentally opened the trunk when I meant to turn the parking brake off. Now the car is freaking out. Only moderate wheel spin, that's good. And I'm going to utilize the paddle shifters. Pretty happy with that rotation there. I don't love that it still shifts for me, even though I'm not pushing all the way down through the kick down button. I wish it were, would hold gears and kind of hit the rev limiter, especially because it doesn't rev out all that high, at least from a noise and sensation standpoint. It's a pretty smooth motor. Even here in sport mode, I could go for a little more steering feel. I'm not saying steering weight, there's just a, there's a bit of a, a wooliness to it. So like, why did it shift right there? I'm still driving sporty. Is, and there's no like uh, shift hold button, I don't believe, no. There needs to be a manual shifting mode where it holds gears. I mean, fortunately, the transmission shifts so quickly that it's not the end of the world, but... And I will say, they've done a really good job with this wet clutch, dual clutch automatic transmission. I mean, even in the very first iteration, I drove a pre-production Sonata N-Line when it first came out, and even then, they had the tuning really darn, darn well done. So here's the thing. Manufacturers have been coming out with uh, higher horsepower, sort of sporty-esque family sedans for decades now. And they all end up going away. I mean, you could go all the way back to Pontiac uh, Grand Prix GXPs, or, or even before the GXP, didn't they just throw the 5.3 liter V8 in one of the, the Grand Prix and call it a day? And then you fast forward a little bit. I mean, obviously you got big boys like the Chevy SS, but I'm not even talking that. That's rear wheel drive and Corvette motor and everything like that. But I'm talking things like the Fusion Sport that gave us a, a powerful powertrain, gave us all-wheel drive, and nobody bought that. What else was there? I mean, obviously, you had the Accord V6 for a long time. That got really powerful and actually really engaging to drive, and that ended up going away. You used to be able to get the manual with it and everything. Camry used to be able to get that 300-horsepower V6 right up until this most recent generation. And they all are cool. They all get 
lauded by journalists and then they don't end up selling very well because admittedly if you're looking for a sporty sort of car you get a hot hatch or you get um you know a, a hot sedan or something you get the mazda 3 turbo or you get a civic si or or something i mean the civic has grown so much that you could practically do what you used to be able to do in an accord in that vehicle and i mean even the elantra n you got a good amount of space in that car and with the adaptive suspension it, it, it calms down and it is a, a livable vehicle and so then you get into this family sedan category and yeah, Hyundai is still giving you the Sonata N-Line, which I think is good, and I think the price is right. I don't think they should be fi filling it up with expensive adaptive suspension and things like that. But look at Honda. Honda has changed the Accord higher horsepower version to just be a hybrid. Look at Toyota. They've gotten rid of the V6, and it's, again, just a hybrid. Who else even makes sedans anymore? I mean, Ford is out. Chevy's out. Chrysler's out. Kia. Kia will still give you the K5. Nissan will still give you the turbo version of the Altima. But even that, that's tuned more traditionally in that it's powerful, but it doesn't have any sort of sporty suspension or anything like that. So it's still a comfortable daily driver. And to me, that's the, the strange character of the Sonata M-Line is, is that you get kind of this vehicle that is a little worse to live with day, day to day but then is more fun to drive up in the canyons. But I really don't think most people buying a family sedan like this at this price point are using their car like that. But again, I, I appreciate and I applaud Hyundai for the improvements they've made to this car. It's a, it's a nice car. I just don't think the online is the way to go on this one. I really don't. If I'm buying a Sonata, give me comfort. Give me 50 miles per gallon. Give me that hybrid. But before we wrap up, we've got to put the Sonata N-Line on the Daily Motor leaderboard. Let's see where we're putting this one. Current leaders are the Kia EV9, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, and the Toyota Tacoma. Where is the Sonata N-Line going? We're putting it right here below the Audi S8 and above the Volkswagen Atlas, 17th place for our ranking. Like I said, I, I, I think the car is competent, it just, it lacks the, the fizz for me, and, and there are other cars to me that execute their purpose, Ooh. that execute their purpose just that much better. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully I get time in the Sonata Hybrid here soon. I think there'd be a lot more about that car that I would appreciate. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Thank mm -hmm. you.